This is antique hardware, consists of over a million pieces of hardware for doors and windows and furniture, cabinetry, bath accessories, and lighting, dating from 1850-62, about today. There's no other store like it in the world. And it's more than just, there's no other store, there's no other place like it. This is all original hardware, none of it is reproduction. There are places that sell hardware, but they're scavenger yards, and there's a doorknob over there, and there's a door plate over there. But Lizzie's genius was to organize it. This is all very well organized by material and its function. And then each one of these bagged areas represents another time period, so Eastlake, and then Victorian, Duncan Fife, and Chippendale. And those are all original to their time period. I don't think you can separate the store from this. So then this room, which we call the blue room, which when I first took over this property and moved in here was my bedroom, it primarily is wall sconces. I've always said if you opened up Lizzie's head, it would look like the inside of this room. This was my view. That was my view. People really need parts. People come in and they say, I need this thing that's on the other side of my door that my, the thing inside the door goes into, so we point to it. That's the strike plate. And then what we do is we send them to the strike plate wall, which is, I don't know if you recall, but I mentioned to you, is all the way down on the door hardware wall, down towards the end to the left. Ronnie has been working here at the store for almost as long as I have. He runs the restoration department where it all begins. Everything comes in through the back door, whether it's me pulling up from the flea markets or a customer bringing something in to sell it. Every day something comes in. Everything you see needs to be fixed. I do welding, solder, embracing, anything. There is so many things that nobody can fix, and I can fix pretty much everything. About 12 years ago, I finally asked my landlord, can I buy the building? And they said no. So I said, okay, I'm gonna go find a house. So I went and I found a house. And so the loft space ended up becoming available. And- Because you were living there, right? Well, I was living in the loft, and I really had wanted an art gallery for a very long time. I really wanted to be working with contemporary artists with relevant ideas for the time, and they're making one piece, unlike this kind of a product, which is a mass-produced piece. Between having the gallery and being a gallerist and curator, and then I'm a buyer for the store, I juggle a very, very interesting life that really allows me to keep searching for really beautiful aesthetic things.